Hi there. So in this video, we're going to hook up our Arduino to accept an input, a digital input, from a very, very simple um, push button switch. But before we actually get to that, uh, I thought I should expand a little bit on what digital inputs are on the Arduino. The Arduino system, let's see if I can bring this uh, up a little closer. That's a little better. Uh, the digital inputs are along these head this these two headers. Zero from from zero to pin thirteen. These all uh, are connected to the the actual Arduino um, the Atmel um, three twenty eight chip. There are 28 pins on this, and you can see uh, there are 14 of them. Um, doesn't matter which ones on the actual pin on the actual uh, chip are connected where. The only thing that you have to worry about is making sure you get the pins right on these two headers. So pins, uh, digital in digital pins zero and one, are used to communicate between the UNO and the uh, and your computer. Pins 2 to 13 are available for you to use as either inputs or outputs. Now there's a funny thing with these pins. The, the technology that is used in the chip is called CMOS and CMOS has a property of of what they call a very low impedance input. In other words each digital input is like you're connecting a 10 meg ohm resistor to it. It it requires very little current to change the state of an input pin. So what that means is that you can uh, the advantage is that you can use these pins as ca capacitive sensors. So uh, if I just even get close enough without really touching the pins, I can affect their state. I can change them from zero to one or from one to zero. The, the downside to this is that uh, you have to be careful when you want a definite zero or one as will happen when we want to detect whether the button is pressed or whether it's not pressed. So let's uh, get back down to our regular focus here. Now we're going to not, not deal with the, the push button at this point right now, but I'm going to connect up let's say pin 12 and I'm just going to let it kind of sit here and then we'll switch to the uh, display to the computer and I'll open Arduino And we'll develop a, a simple program to read pin 12 to see what Arduino thinks the state of that pin is. And we'll start with bare minimum, which is the example under basics, bare minimum. And we've got uh, two two components. The first one is the setup. This happens when you power up or reset the Arduino. This will run and once this setup is finished then it goes into this loop. I'm going to, before I even get to setup, I'm going to set a, a variable. I'm going to call it integer 
and I'm going to name it call in pin equals 12. And I end it with a semicolon. So all this is doing is it's saying, I'm declaring this variable. It's an integer. Um, it goes from 0 to 255. Um, and you can't have fractions. It's just whole numbers from 0 to 255. I'm giving it a name called in pin, and then I'm giving it a value, 12. So what I'm saying is the input pin is pin 12, which is what I've got uh, on the Arduino. Okay, next line is I'm going to set, rather than uh, set things up, having to set up, a, say, an LED, I'm going to use the serial port of the Arduino to tell us what the state of that pin is. And to get started with the serial port, we use this command, serial dash begin. And uh, you have to put a capital in front of serial. And once you get going on it, uh, it changes color. So you can see that it's changed from black to uh, brown. And that means that I've typed in a valid or a recognized command. Really all I'm asking it to do is to begin to set up the serial port for 9600 baud, which is um, uh, relatively slow speed. What we're actually telling the Arduino is get ready to use digital pins 0 and 1 to send signals up through the USB cable to the computer where the Arduino IDE will interpret that and display it in a separate window on your, on your computer screen. Every command, once again, every command that you put in as a separate line has to end with a semicolon. A lot of these rules come from the C language, so uh, there's no point in arguing about whether or not it's intuitive. It really isn't, but it's it's part of the C um, the C programming way of working. Right. So the serial port is set up. The next thing I need to tell the Arduino that my input pin 12, I want it to be an input, not an output. Now, officially, I don't actually have to declare an input because when you turn the Arduino on, the, oops, the, uh, the control system, the Atmel 328 chip, actually sets things up as an input for you. But it's a, it's a good practice to, to declare inputs and outputs for all the pins that you're going to be using. So this command is pin mode, and it's small p, big M, and you can see that it's a valid spelling, so um, it's turned to brown. If I don't use a capital N, let's see what happens. It, 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 it's not recognized. So you have to have a capital N pin mode. Then I put a bracket, input pin, comma, and then input in capital letters. You can see input is now green. So I've set up the serial port and I've set up the pin 12 to be an input. So in my loop, I'm going to set up a, uh, another variable, but it's going to be a variable which will change throughout the loop. Every time it goes, uh, loops through, it will 
create a new uh, variable. And this variable isn't going to be an in integer. It's going to be a Boolean. A Boolean variable is either a 1 or a 0. And I'm going to give it a name. Data equals digital, capital R-E-A-D, in pin, semicolon. So what I'm saying is that this variable, which will have one of two states, either one or zero, will be read from the in pin, which is pin 12, and it will go into this variable data. And then I'll tell the serial port to output it. Serial dot print ln print line data. So what this is saying is print data and it's just it's a print line which means at the end of this this command jump down a line basically add a carriage return. So print data and then we'll tell it to delay 100 milliseconds. Okay. So I'm going to verify this to make sure that it's good to compile. And in this case, I've made an error. It says down here, it's expected a semicolon before the bracket token. In other words, I missed the semicolon here. So I'll put that in and see if it verifies. It's done. Okay, so uh, we've got the program ready to upload. I'm going to upload it now. There was a problem with it. Let's make sure we've got our board and port. Our port is not selected, so we have to go ahead and choose the Uno. Now let's see if it will upload. Okay, you can see that it's uploaded now. I'm going to go over to the serial monitor. And uh, this pin 12 is basically an antenna. It's uh, just picking up any stray electrical fields, and it's giving us a kind of a random output. Let's see if we can get this. Uh... So it's just going through and it's giving us either ones or zeros, depending on what, uh, what it's picking up. So let's take a look and see uh, in another, in a different way, what's actually going on here. So I've got pin 12 from the Arduino. And I've got different electrical fields that are affecting it. And the Arduino is picking these up depending on whether or not the electrical fields are giving something closer to 5 volts. It will give us a 1. If it's closer to 0 volts, it will give us a 0. And these fields will change. They will uh, they'll be coming from the the alternating current in the house, 
They'll come from radio waves. Somebody turns on a microwave oven somewhere close by. All of that gets added to the all of the electro, electromagnetic fields in this area, and they will affect the pin. And so what I need to do here in order to stabilize this and, and give us uh, a reading when we put our, our uh, circuit together is we need to do something which tells the Arduino it's either one or a zero. So what we can do is we can add a resistor to ground and then above that place our switch which connects to plus 5. This is a 10k resistor that we'll put in. So when the switch is open it will ground this pin. It will force the pin to be at a zero volts potential. When we close the switch, that's a root, direct root to plus five. So the pin will read plus five. The reason why we don't just have uh, a straight wire here is because that would create a short circuit. We need to uh, reduce the current flowing through to allow it to affect pin 12. So this would be our circuit here. Pin 12, unless we have this pull down resistor, Unless we have the pull-down resistor, pin 12 will float. It'll move up and down depending on the electrical currents in the air. The pull-down resistor brings pin 12 to ground, to zero, until we close the switch, and then it allows uh, 5 volts to be seen by the pin, and then the state changes to 1. So let's see how that works. You can see, see it's still running. It's still uh, sending through the serial port. It's still sending signals out to the computer through the USB cable. So here are our 10K resistors. So I'm connecting the plus 5 and the ground to the plus 5 and ground buses. Then from the plus 5, I'll we'll connect to one end of the switch. And then I'll connect to the other end of the switch, the other contact. I'll connect that to the ground bus, just like what we've got here. Then In the top of the resistor, as we have here,
we will connect to pin 12. So, here's our serial connection. It's showing us zeros. Now, it's a little bit difficult to see. It doesn't look like anything's changing. Let's uh, close this and reopen it so that you can see. Now, if I press the button, you should be able to hear a click. I now am reading ones. Release the button. It now gives us zero. You can see there's no randomness. As long as the button isn't pressed, it's giving uh, a reading of zero. When I click on the one, uh, click on the button, it gives us a one. So at this point, what we should be doing is uh, saving our Arduino sketch into the sketchbook. So I'll do save as. I'm going to create a new folder in the sketchbook, and I'll call it course. And we'll save it as, let's see, pull down resistor, resistor. So uh, it's done saving. It's just given us a little notice that the sketch name had to be modified. Sketch names can only consist of ASCII characters and numbers, but cannot start with a number. They should also be less than 60 characters, 64 characters long. And if you have a space in them, space is not an ASCII character, so um, it's put an underscore in between the words. So if we go into our sketchbook, into course, there's our sketch. Looking at, uh, let's see, where can I find my Arduino? Folder, there it is. There's the course. There's the pull down resistor folder. This is the actual Arduino file. It has a .ino extension. So that's the first uh, sketch demonstrating digital input.